Hey there guys, so I have a Zoll Pro Pack here today that needs to be PM'd. So this one is due, was due a couple days ago, so I'm going to start doing the PM process on this thing. Okay, so to begin with, I use uh, Fluke software, it's called Fluke Answer, A-N-S-U-R. Uh, I use their, all of their test equipment also, minus a couple of power supply as well as a multimeter. I don't use, you know, they don't really do too much with that stuff, but uh, I use Agilent multimeter and an HP power supply. Um, but right now we're doing the Zill Pro Pack MD um, PM, and this is what the unit looks like. Now we have a mount in the back here. This is for our hel helicopter mounts, and this will actually strap right in. They can lock it down. And this is not standard. This is definitely not standard for. Uh, MICU, EMS, whatever. So this is our little attachment. But um, I use the Impulse 7000 DP by Fluke, as well as the um, ProSim 8 as well. And all of this is connected up to my computer here, my Toughbook. And I do all the tests pretty much from the Toughbook. So it, it makes it very easy. I absolutely love it. The software isn't cheap, though. Neither is the equipment. The equipment is about, uh, I want to say, about over 7,000 for the impulse, which the impulse does defibrillation, pacemaking, and ECG, where the ProSim 8, which is, I think that one was six over 6,000, um, it does NIBP, ECG, SpO2, invasive blood pressure, and ECG, I already said ECG, um, but it does basically everything except pacing and defibrillation, so, and for have to get it PM'd, um, it's about $300 a unit, maybe $400 per, um, I actually signed up for the silver uh, silver care plan by Fluke, which is fourteen hundred dollars for three years. So it'll save us about seven hundred in the long run. So it's it's worth it. So, uh, but everything else, yeah, everything else is hooked up by way of the computer. It makes it. I've programmed everything into it. That's the only difficult part is you have to program everything, all your parameters and everything into this program, which it took I don't know, a day and a half maybe. So, all right, well, let's get started. Okay, so to begin with, um, in the answer program, I'm using the 3.0, so that's the newest one that they have. Um, to begin with, I have to actually, uh, the way I have it programmed is I have to submit my serial number, the status, manufacturer, type, model, and the asset tag in order to begin. Um, after that, I can actually start the test. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to power on my Pro Pack. And I'll print out a slip saying everything is okay, self-test has passed. It prints off a slip that says yeah, everything is okay, everything's passed. So that's all ready to go. All right, and it does say on here that CO2 calibration is due soon. Uh, it should be due maybe tomorrow, I think. Uh, but we will get that out of the way right now. So let's see. So to begin with, we do. I'm following the test protocol of Zoll's service manual. So this falls in line with everything. So we're just going to do what they call the maintenance test. So basically, how does this unit itself look? Uh, is there any cracks, any breaks, any fractures of any sort, um, any open holes, open wounds? I mean, is there anything visibly wrong with the outside unit that I need to take, take and fix up right now? So visibly, it looks fine. I mean, we have, we have a couple cracks here and there, uh, but nothing nothing that will put this unit out of service yet so um, everything we can just pass everything so pass 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 all right so the operational test so that is basically checking the functionality of the software 
Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit this little back sign right here. We're going to go to the gear, supervisor, and then it will ask us for a password. Password is nothing kept secret. It is actually inside of the, the service manual. Pretty much anybody can find it. You look on Google, you can find the service manual. So password is one, two, three, four. Back, and we're going to go to service. After the first thing, you go to service, device tests, and you're just going to go through this whole, pretty much the whole thing. So first is the keypad test. Hit begin, and you're just going through all the soft keys. So we're going through all the soft keys here. Pacer sync. All right, so that's all fine. All the keys light up. So you're going to hit the OK button, which is right next to the up and down key. You're going to hit that a couple times, and then you're able to exit out. Then we're going to go to the LED test. The LED test is up here. These are your LEDs. So green, good, yellow, good, red, awesome. And we're going to go defib shock button. That's our defib shock button. So we're going to LCD test. So green. Red, sorry, red, green, blue, white, change sides, white, blue, green, red. Looks good. RFU indicator test. That is this little box right here. This will actually light up whenever, if there's a, uh, I think it's when there's no battery or there's some sort of an error, it'll light up. Uh, don't quote me on that. But all I do is hit begin test and it'll flash a couple times. Which I was good. All right, audio test. So this will actually test the speaker right here. There's three different levels: low, medium, high, and uh, piezo, PDO, piezo, whatever. So we're just going to hit test speaker. Good. And the high pitch noise. That's great. So that test is complete. Printer test. All we'll do is uh, print out a series of characters and a couple lines. That's what it looks like. So, printer's good. Battery test. This is actually like a built in multimeter. It will actually test the battery as well as give the battery percentage. So, begin test. My battery is at 12.226 volts with a capacity of 91% currently. Fan test. What we're going to do for that is we're going to take the fan here. The temperature set point is set at 40. We're going to take that temperature, lower it down past these points right here, T1, T2. So I'm at 40, now I'm at 34, 28, and I'm going to just lower it to something. And fan state was currently off when it was at the 40. Now it is on once I go past that 2930 from the current device temperature. We're turning the fan on and trying to cool it down. So I'm going to take it back up to what it was, which was 40. And I will not do the NIBP test or the USB test right now. That will happen at a later time. That's actually in the second stage, well, I guess third stage of everything. So I can pass all of this. All right. So now we're going to do the leads test. The leads test is actually hooking it up to the uh, defibrillator here. And we're going to see if it recognizes a fault on all 10 leads. So I'm going to turn on the, my defibrillator tester. Alright, so turn on my defibrillator. 